Hi and welcome to yet another episode. What we've got here is the Mega Drive Mini, life in America, the Genesis. But as you can see, I've got the whole kit and cook boodle that goes on top. So you've got the cartridge, the adapter, the uh, 32X, and the Mega CD. Now, those bits are all just a bit of plastic. They're fun to have in the moments of something to look at, but they functionally don't do anything. And the same with this Mega CD bit, doesn't functionally do anything. Now, for the people that had a Mega CD or still have a Mega CD, I never had one as a kid, but I do know there's supposed to be green and red LEDs here, but there isn't. I want to do something about that. So let's get these opened up and see what's inside and see what we can do. Now, I've cheated a little bit because what I've actually done is already taken this to bits. So there's six screws. Phillips heads, you know, duh, 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 duh. And let's carefully take this off. So there's a bit more plastic. And then there's the motherboard, or the PCB, whatever you want to call it. There's the power switch, that tiny little white thing there is the reset switch. And then in that black square with a circle in the middle is where the power LED is, which is red. A couple of USBs, HDMI, and then micro USB for the power or data if you know what you're doing. That's a whole different episode. Now, obviously what I want to do is take this PCB to bits and have a look what's below it. So let's get the screwdriver out. Okay, so we've got the screwdriver. There's four screws, one there, one there, one there, and one there. I'll jump cut this now though. Okay, so we've undone those screws. Let's carefully remove this, remembering that the ports at the back are sticking out just fractionally. And then it's got this plastic post it's trying to slide up against. So there we go. Now be careful about this because I'm sure some of you want to rip that off and have a look what's underneath. But I, if you, unless you really do want to have a look, I'd leave it alone. But make sure it doesn't get banged around because it is just sort of touching there because it's trying to keep that particular microchip cool which will be the CPU so let's just leave that in place because it'll have the thermal sticker or thermal compound there what we want to do though is look underneath and see how good the solder pads are for the USB okay we've got some good solder pads here so we can get some power 5 volt oh so many amps so that we can power a couple of LEDs so what we need to do is run a wire from here through the, the case and into here. So let's have a look how we can get around doing that. Obviously this board sits the other way around, it sits there. So a couple of wires leading from here. There is a hole in the case. And I'll hold that up, you can see that there's a blue through the side, so that means there's a hole right there. So that's good because it means we can lead some wires out of there. So let's put this out of the way for now and have a look at this. Now, there appears to be a hole down here. There's a slot down here, but does that actually feed all the way into the case? I don't know because of the other side, it's filled in. So let's get a long enough screwdriver because this also has six Phillips screws, but they're very quite deep. I mean, there's the end of the screwdriver. So your bit needs to be at least an inch long and skinny enough to reach the other way in. So let's jump cut as I get that open. Okay, so I've got all the screws taken out. Let's try to see how easy it is to get this open. It seems to be that you un to pop it and sort of pull it away from here. Here's my nail. A bit of plastic just flung itself off. The pretend locking system. This would be nice if it just popped off, but it's not doing. What's happening with this bit here? That comes off. There's a bit of cardboard inside which I knew about if 
from seeing other people's videos, but they never showed how fiddly this is. Okay, so now that I've got that other bit off, it was a lot easier to remove. So that's the top part coming away. And then this is the bit of cardboard where they've pretended the Mega CD gubbins is inside. Which way would it be? Yeah, the CD that way, of course. So, just a bit of cardboard. Not glued down or anything like that. It's interesting that they've done that because, of course, most people are not going to take this to bits. So, it's a bit of an Easter egg. Put that to the side. Okay, so what we wanted to know though, is there a hole all the way through? And there is. So this will lead into here. And then, of course, this will sit at the front. So, a bit of wire, a couple of bits of wire going down there. And then if we can fix a couple of LEDs to here. But let's try to see if we can actually see light through here before we actually do anything. Ignore the wiring colouring there, this cable for some reason is not using a standard colouring of the USB but the point is I do have a couple of LEDs and I have a resistor in play. But let's see if this actually works. Now the green would be on the left behind the ready and the red would be behind the access. Now I realise there's probably going to be a lot better way of doing all of this. Um, you know, if you do do it on your own head, be it. But let's see if the light actually comes through. And there we go. It's soft, but it is there. So we've got the other side of the motherboard and we've got side B and on port two on the far right, we've got plus five volts. On the far left, we've got ground. And of course, in the middle, we've got a couple of data ones. We're not interested in them too. We just want the plus five and the ground. So I've got a couple of bits of wire these are for so we can connect the top and the bottom of the whole console setup. So the small one will go inside the Mega Drive Mini and the long one will go in the Mega CD. This means of course when we're separating it, it doesn't mean that we have to desolder everything, unscrew everything, we can just disconnect. So we want it to point to the left so that it will actually come out of the hole in the bottom of the case. So what I'm going to do is tin the end of the connectors. This just means adding a little bit of solder to the ends. This will make it easier to actually solder to the motherboard. I'm just adding some fresh solder to the solder points so that when I add the wires it'll be easy to do. Now I have already bent down the pins a little bit so that they go towards the points better. Okay, as you can see, I've soldered the two points. So my orange wire is going to be the plus five volts and the yellow is going to be my ground. In my case, you might use different colors, but it's just when I get this one going and I want to put the LEDs on the other end, everything's gonna be okay. So let's put the LEDs on the other end of this. Okay, so I've tinned one end of the long cable the other end up just leaving alone of course because I need that to go into the little ports. But first we need to get the resistor and then the LEDs on. And what I want to do is the resistor, the green LED and then the red LED just so that it sits into the case nicely because obviously that's the way that I want it to sit. So let's get on with putting this resistor on. Okay, so I've bent the LEDs out so that I know exactly where I want them to go. 
I'm just going to put some electrical tape over the back to make sure they don't move around and everything like that. But this is the plus 5 volts or the anode. And then of course that's the plus 5 volts on the red one there. And then you can just about see that's bent out so they're pointing upwards. So that when the wire goes inside, when the, this wire goes inside, it's all connected up. So this I need to actually connect to that side there. So I'll do that now. So we've got a nice little circuit here now. It fits just like that. I want to put some electrical tape across there to hold that in place. But I want to test it before I start screwing everything back together again. So of course I want to secure this a little bit, but I've got to be careful of this screw hole. So a little bit of electrical tape should help with that as well. So be careful of that screw hole. And then we feed that through the hole. And then make sure everything lines up. Let's make sure the HDMI port and the USB charging port is there, power port. It should all just click into place. So there we go, everything's fine there. There's no pressure, plenty of space for these plugs to fit underneath. Sort of resistance. Now obviously I don't want to go tugging on them or anything like that. But then let's make sure we've got this wired up correctly for this bit. go of course making sure that this doesn't accidentally touch the insides or the scissors or anything like that bring across some power go. I just showed some power but there we go that's the it turned on. So both LEDs are lit a lot brighter in person than they are on the camera. I turn that off wait for it to shut down and there we go. So that works so let's mess around get the LEDs on here, a bit, bit of electrical tape and start screwing things together. Okay, a bit of electrical tape, put some over the resistor, don't really need it because there's going to be nothing else inside there, I'm going to make sure the cardboard's not inside there, but I recommend you turn it on and play around positioning the LEDs just exactly where you want them. So that's where I've got them right now, as I said there's a nice glow for me don't want it super bright but at the same time I'd like to see them so let's get everything screwed back together again oh just one thing while you're screwing this back together again make sure it's turned off and make sure that this is in the off position as you place the lid down because otherwise you'll swear at yourself when you've screwed all the screws into the bottom just a helpful little tip there okay so we've got the front panel in we bent the wires around a bit because we've got to be careful of this uh, post so that the screw can go in from the other side and obviously we fed the wire through the hole so it leads to the top we've also got to be careful of this pretend lock mechanism so let's put that back in place actually it goes the other way around so that sits there let's put everything together as you've noticed, I'm not going to put the cardboard back inside. I'm just going to put that back into the big box, you know, the retail box it came in. I don't really want a bit of cardboard sat there when I've got electricity going through. Probably being over cautious, but that's the way I am. Let's see if we can get this all to click together quite nicely. Come on, just one more pop and it should be down. There we go. So the pretend lock mechanism's in there, the front panel's in, 
sort of things. So let's make sure we're actually getting lights at the front before we screw this together properly. So we need to get our little mini Mega Drive or Mega Drive Mini and obviously make sure the wires are the correct way around. So in my case, orange to orange, yellow to yellow. Oops. Pop back out again. So that's that for now. Let's get some power to the set back of the Mega Drive. Come on. A bit difficult doing things stuff. So let's hold it up, turn it on. And there we go, some LEDs at the front. I'm really happy with that. I'm going to turn it off again. And there we go, it turned off. So that's all good enough for that. So now we need to mess around and push the wires in. So unplug this power once again. And now it turns out the wires are ridiculously long. But let's push these back inside. And there we go. Looks all nice and neat. You don't even see that there's any wires. One more go with the power. Turn it on. Power's lit there. And we've got some green and red LEDs at the front there. So as I say, I'm really happy with that. Time to screw everything back together again. I'm sure you can do that on your own. But as always, happy gaming.